Song is still looking for information about the Luna project on the database, but every file related to the case is classified. A while later, the captain calls everyone to a doorway leading to the basement. They are surprised to see vegetation growing out of the passage. The group acknowledges that this is a great discovery and is eager to explore it. The soldiers E1 and E2 volunteer to go down first and the captain allows them. After they ensure the place is safe, they are followed by the rest of the group. Initially, the greenery astonishes them, making them unsure of what caused life on the moon to thrive. But then, they enter a room full of lunar water capsules. One of the capsules is broken, and the little water sample inside it seems to have caused the growth of the entire vegetation. The plants produced oxygen and formed an ecosystem of their own. If humans use the lunar water correctly, the Earth might go back to its original form, but it is clear that they cannot control its effects yet. The captain orders the crew to start the retrieval process, which is the primary aim of the mission. They are extra careful while handling the capsules after seeing what they can do to humans. Everything goes well until E1 is attacked by a fast creature. Song and the captain see this, but their eyes cannot catch the enemy because of its speed. The captain runs to save E1 and comes to a halt after noticing that his hand has been cut off. It turns out that the creature ripped E1's arm because he was holding a capsule of lunar water. The others point their guns at the creature, threatening it to stop. A soldier shoots her, making her run away while the others follow behind. A while later, Song and the captain get a good look at the creature and find out she is a little girl with superhuman powers. She has a strange organ behind her ears that looks like gills and her eyes roll back rapidly. It is almost as if she has mutated to adapt to the lunar environment. The crew tries to catch her, but she runs away, breaking a capsule on the way. To everyone's surprise, the water in the capsule starts spreading, threatening to take over all of them. The captain prioritizes their safety and orders everyone to get out of the basement immediately. By now, the crew member who was injured is dead, but they do not bother to bring him outside. Ryu picks up the case of lunar water that had been collected. Before he follows the others, he sees that the rest of the stock of water is turning red. This means now the water inside the case is the only way to save the Earth. After everyone evacuates the basement, the water spreads and takes over the dead body, causing the basement to flood simultaneously. Outside, Dr. Hong sees that E2 has been injured while trying to fight the little girl earlier. They quickly bring him to the infirmary and find out that his lungs have punctured and he needs immediate surgery. The group is assured because of Dr. Hong's presence since she is trained to handle similar situations. However, trouble arises when they fall short of E2's blood type. In the end, Ryu offers his blood and saves a life. When everything calms down, the crew gathers to talk about the monster girl who killed E1. Song theorizes that the girl must think of them as intruders because she clearly has been living in the Ball Hay base for a long time. Moreover, she was looking for lunar water, which could mean she is trying to stop them from stealing what is hers. As for how she ended up in the base, the only possible explanation is that she is a survivor of the Bal Hay fiasco that occurred five years ago. A while later, the captain gets a call with SAA. Cho is delighted that they got their hands on the water, but wants the captain to kill the intruder as soon as possible. He argues that the intruder looked like a child who survived the toxins five years ago. However, Cho refuses to believe him and exclaims that the kid might be a thief from a different nation trying to ruin the mission. She promises to send the backup as soon as possible. Right after the call, we see a picture of her and the monster girl pop up on her screen. This makes it evident that she knows the girl prior to the mission and is hiding something from the captain. The captain, on the other hand, feels his moral dilemma coming in the way of the mission. Following that, he meets Song, who wants to go to the secret data storage unit to retrieve information about the Lunar Water Project. The captain is initially skeptical because he doesn't want to risk any more lives. But then, Song explains that they cannot bring the water to Earth before they know for sure that it is safe. After contemplating her comment, he allows her and Dr. Hong to go to the classified data unit. Dr. Hong keeps Ryu in charge of staying with the injured until he is needed somewhere else. When Ryu is alone, he gets a text from someone on the Earth asking him if they have acquired the sample water. 
It is then revealed that he is a corporate spy who has been sent to sabotage the mission and retrieve the capsules for the same organization that appointed Gisu. His next orders are to eliminate the crew members and bring the sample to the backup party coming to retrieve him from the moon. Meanwhile, the captain and the other men of the crew are looking for the little girl. They walk through vents and shafts, assuming that she has been using them to travel around the base. Eventually, they reach a hallway that is not on the map, and they find out that it connects to all the ventilation, forming a maze-like structure. Then there are Dr. Hong and Song, who are in the data unit. They use a higher level car to download the information about the project. While it is downloading, Hong asks Song what her sister was like. Since she also died in the Balhae base five years ago, the topic is sensitive for Song. Still, she reveals that she never knew her sister was working here before she was informed about her death. They grew apart over the years and Song didn't pick up the last phone call from her sister. It is still the greatest regret of her life. By the time she is done telling the story, the data is downloaded, but none of it contains any information about the Luna project. It is clear that someone deliberately deleted everything related to it. Meanwhile, Ryu collects the capsules of the only remaining lunar water with the intention of stealing them. He is caught red-handed by Song, but manages to get off the hook by making up a story. However, he eventually has to place the capsules back in the freezer. All of a sudden, the little girl appears at the door to the lab. Ryu points his gun at her while the ladies step aside. The captain and the rest of the crew are also informed immediately. Song wants to approach the girl with caution, but before she can, Ryu hastily shoots her, causing her to go on a rampage. Suddenly, Song halts everyone in their tracks, asking them to leave the girl to her. She sees that the girl is looking at the capsule and tries to win her trust by handing it over. The plan works and the girl calms down, but they are interrupted again when Ryu shoots her, causing the capsule to break. The girl is also shot in the process. She struggles on the table as her gills open and close repeatedly. Just when the crew thinks that she might die, the girl surprises everyone. Her wounds heal in an instant and she grows stronger again. She quickly rushes away through the shaft of the ceiling, leaving the crew wondering. Following the incident, they keep the remaining capsules safely inside the refrigerator again. The captain calls Song out for being stupid and putting everyone's life at risk. But Song argues that the girl is their only shot at finding out a way to control lunar water because she is the only person immune to it. Instead of trying to kill her, they have to win her trust or capture her. The rest of the group agrees and they think of a way to control the girl. They decide to put a capsule in the hallway as bait and close the doors to keep her locked. Hong checks Ryu's temperature and finds out he is feverish. This again gives him a reason to stay at the infirmary while everyone else is working on the other side of the base. This time, he is determined to kill anyone who comes in his way. Somewhere else, the captain gets on a call with the chief of resource group, Mr. Kim. He trusts the man and asks him everything he knows about the Balhae base. Kim replies that when it was shut down by Cho five years ago, there was someone who opposed her orders. The captain wants him to elaborate further, but Mr. Kim asks him to talk to Song instead. Following the call, Kim goes to see the captain's daughter, who is not getting any better. Kim has promised to look after her and is doing his best to keep his promise to the captain. Somewhere outside the water distribution facility, many poor people are fighting and crying for a single drop. Back on the lunar base, the crew develops an elaborate plan to catch the little girl. Song stands in the middle of a hallway with a capsule to lure her in. The captain is keeping a close eye on her from one side of the hallway while two more men are on the other side. As they wait for the girl, Ryu is busy somewhere else collecting the capsules for the second time. He walks away with them, but right then, E2 gains consciousness. Even though he is heavily injured, he goes to check the refrigerator and finds the capsules missing. He is about to contact the captain when Ryu appears and shoots him dead. Sometime later, Mr. Hong arrives at the infirmary and finds both Ryu and E2 missing. She informs the captain through a device, but he has to focus on the execution of the plan before the disappearance. Suddenly, the group sees someone approaching them at a great speed on a tablet. The guy hides while Song stays in the hallway. When the girl enters the designated zone, Song is supposed to step out. 
However, she refuses to do so and wants to form a connection with the girl instead. In a moment of panic, the captain pulls her aside, causing the girl to panic as well. She tries following them behind, but her leg is stuck because of the closing door. Song, yet again, wants to help her, but is bitten by the girl. She struggles and cries for help, making the captain hit her with a tranquilizer gun. To their surprise, the girl hugs Song before falling unconscious. Then, Song notices Luna 073 written on the back of the little girl's neck. At the same time, Ryu reaches the control panel and closes all the doors of the base. Before the group comprehends what is going on, Luna gains consciousness and runs away through a shaft. Song follows her and is stuck in a different room than the captain. Still, she decides to track the girl through the shaft. In the meantime, Dr. Hong offers to bring the capsules to a safer location. But upon checking the freezers, the capsules are already gone. She also finds E2's dead body in one of the freezers and is in shock. Song is still following Luna, and for some reason, the little girl is showing her the way and waiting for her to catch up. Eventually, Song reaches a messy room where Luna has been staying all this time. She opens a compartment and finds her laying down inside. The two look at each other, trying to analyze what the other person is thinking. Song makes the first attempt at talking and asks her how her leg is. When Luna replies with nothing, Song brings out candies and teaches her how to eat them. The two share a special bond and Song senses that the little girl trusts her. In the last scene, Song finds pictures of her and her sister on Luna's bed and is shocked. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on the notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thanks for watching.